Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. Welcome back. Welcome one. Welcome to all to yet another Wednesday Bible study time. And as you know, this is the last Wednesday of the month. And on the last Wednesday of each month, we hear from one of our associate ministers here at the Mount. And today we will hear from none other than Dr. Lucretia Wilson. I know she needs no introduction. If you have been around Mount Moriah, you have seen her, you have heard her sing, and you have probably met her. But I want to present her to some and introduce her to others. And I won't read her entire bio. She has so many credentials and things that I do invite you to click on the link below and you can see her bio in its entirety. But I will give you a brief summary so that we all know something about this preacher who will come before us today. Dr. Lucretia D. Wilson is the 10th child born to Lucy B. Atmore and the late Deacon B.C. Atmore Sr. She was reared in a small town in Alabama, and she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ at the young age of eight years of age. In 2010, she accepted her call to ministry, and she was licensed in 2016, and she has been moving forward ever since in developing her gifts. Professionally, Dr. Wilson is a team member and core registered nursing faculty of graduate studies. She has received several degrees with the most recent being the postgraduate degree as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner from Maryville University in St. Louis, Missouri. Other degrees include the doctor of nursing practitioner, agent of change from Waldron University, masters of science in nursing, with a specialization in healthcare and nursing education from the University of Phoenix, Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the MUSC, uh, Associate's Degree in Nursing from Angelo State University, and an Associate's Degree in Allied Science from Jefferson State Junior College through a linkage program with the University of Alabama in Birmingham, Alabama. She is currently in the process of becoming board certified as a mental health practitioner which fosters medication management and psychotherapy to clients dealing with mental disorders. The list goes on and on and on of her accolades. She has many, many of her credentials with honors, and she is married to the only true love of her life, Tyrone J. Wilson. Together, they are blessed to have had one son, two daughters, two granddaughters, and two grandsons. At this time, after our centering moment, we will hear from none other than Dr. Lucretia Wilson. I want to remind you also, though, that we are going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper on this Sunday. And if you will be taking, partaking with us virtually, you can come on Saturday between 11 and 12 and pick up your bread and your cup. You can come through between the hours once again of 11 and 12. If you plan to be with us in person at the eight o'clock worship service, of course, you will be able to receive your communion once you arrive. Now, family, let us prepare with our centering moment, prepare our minds and our hearts, and we will hear a word from the Lord after our centering moment. While you fight all our battles, fight all our battles, at your feet will remain. While you fight all our battles, fight all our battles, we cast our care. On you, while you fight all our battles, fight all our battles, we cast our cares on you. While we fight, great defender. Hi.
hallelujah to the Lord God Almighty for this awesome day of life. Truly, God, you are the breath in my lungs. A special thank you to Senior Pastor Dr. Byron L. Benton for this platform and to the priest of our home, Brother T.J. Wilson, for his unfailing love and support of my calling and ministries. I greet my fellow laborers in the gospel and my sisters and brothers in Christ. God is omnipresent and Lord, I come in the name of Jesus, reverencing your presence. And I also am ecstatic that God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. Keep my life clean every day. I'm going to go back with him when he comes back. See, I've come too far. And I won't turn back, cause God is, God is, God is, God is, God is my all and all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for being my all in all. Elohim, meaning one who is strong and has authority. And El Elyon, God most high. Thank you for your ever present help. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Will you please stand in the sanctuary? or in your homes and open your Bibles to Luke, the ninth chapter, beginning with verse 57. I will be reading from the King James Version, which states that God's kingdom must be first. <laughs> and so beginning with verse 57, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said, meaning Jesus, unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. That's Luke the ninth chapter verses 57 through 62. And so my focus theme is verse 62. So for the next few minutes, our theme will be, God is, therefore, regression is not an option. Let me restate that theme again. God is, therefore, regression is not an option. Now this time I'll have you lay your hands on yourself and prophesy to yourself right now and speak into the atmosphere that God is, Therefore, regression is not an option. You may be seated if you can. Regression in the Hebrew and Greek language refers to withdrawing, withdrawal, or returning to a previous state. To sum it up, in the natural and spiritual, regression is starting out on the right course, then retreating to the previous immature, carnal, and sometimes downward state of being. In the synoptic gospel of Luke, we find this competent author, Luke, highlighting events that are a prologue or progression of Jesus's uncompromising journey to the cross. 
Luke conducted what I call a qualitative research. The Bible states that Luke wrote from eyewitnesses, which sounds like he could have taken surveys or had focus groups with those he had interacted with during his missionary journey with Paul. And during this time, he was led of the Holy Spirit to script another narrative of the same events that Matthew and Mark had written about. This is why we call Matthew, Mark, and Luke the Synoptic Gospels. And just to give a brief overview to depict a better picture of our text, in chapters one through eight, we read where this great physician, meaning Luke, brought about awareness to numerous events of healing, recovering, renewal, medicinal, and therapeutic care performed by Jesus while Jesus was in the act of carrying out instructions given to him by God the Father. And at the same time, teaching and imparting into his disciples who later became apostles. To be more concise, my literature review revealed that Luke penned 20 miracles, 23 parables of Jesus, and highlighted his teaching on prayer, then demonstrated the significance of prayer. Throughout the first eight chapters, Luke intensely points out that Jesus implemented some type of mental or physical restorative intervention on behalf of the people. Amen. But now we are in chapter nine and the text begins with Jesus giving his 12 disciples who I said became apostles. He gave them power and authority and sending them to cast out demons and to heal all diseases. During this time and throughout the chapters, Jesus is teaching the apostles through parables, miracles, signs, and wonders. And in verse 21, he changes the course of his message and began to speak of his own death. So stay with me right now, church. The Bible points out that the apostles did not perceive or understand what Jesus meant at that time. They became engrossed in irrelevant issues such as debates about who was the greatest in the kingdom and even about others using the name of Jesus to cast out demons. Again, let me fast forward for the sake of time. In verse 51, as Jesus is drawing near to his purpose, he made opposition with a different group of people in a Samaritan village. See, first it was from Nazareth where he was reared, but now in a Samaritan village. But the rejections and oppositions did not deter him. He continued in obedience to carry out the assignment of his father. I also add that the apostles are still with him as he ex experiences rejection. As we reach verse 57, the apostles began a discussion with Jesus on, the, on following him. You know how it is sometimes we get caught up in the moment and make statements about doing things without considering the cost or just being caught up in the moment. So one of the apostles began to say, Lord, I will follow you. How many of you know that following Jesus in any capacity or role can present with challenging moments? Sometimes you find yourself isolated, which is an excellent thing when we maximize the time. But back to the text, and so the conversation continues. Jesus being commissioned by his father, shared with the apostles. Hey, following me is not easy. You know, I like how the Message Bible puts, puts it. The Message Bible states that Jesus was curt, C-U-R-T. Are you ready to rough it? We're not staying in the best ends, you know. But Jesus asked another, follow me. But some replied with excuses. You know, I found it interesting how they had a desire to follow, but gave reasons and signs of unreadiness for the task. Let me pause right here and see that God is the creator of the universe and man. God is Alpha. God is Omega. 
and to name a few attributes, God is omniscient, which means he is all-knowing. When he calls or impresses upon our hearts to follow him in whatever capacity, trust me, he has already made provisions for you to master the job, even for little Shay Shay, Pookie, and Hubby Ponte. Did you all get that? That's the family. In other words, he knew you would have the family and the boo before you did. Therefore, he made the necessary provisions for you and me to walk out the assignments on our lives. Why is that? Well, God is three in one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nothing gets past him. I know many times we begin the journey with the Lord with great intentions as the apostles did. I can hear them saying, Lord, I will follow you whenever, wherever, and whatever the cost. But sometimes when wickedness and evilness begin to surface, the thought of regression tries to creep in. I believe that is why during Jesus' conversation with his apostles, he hit them with, he who puts his hand to the plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom of God. When I read that, I said, wow. Now that scripture gave heart piercing, soul searching, thought provoking and strong words. Yes, I know our current society and sensitive generation would have difficulty with those words. Well, Jesus was not being harsh. He wanted them to see their hearts and their state of being at that time. So again, I like how the Message Bible breaks the verse down further. It says, Jesus said, no procrastination, no backwards look. You cannot put off God's kingdom until tomorrow. Beloved, I get it. Sometimes negative spirits such as disbelief comes in, which causes us to waver in our minds. But I have been sanctioned to remind you today that God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He knew the end from the beginning because God is what? Omniscient, meaning he is all-knowing. God is the past, present, and future. For those of us who have already made the decision to do that kingdom assignment, know that heartaches, discouragement, doubt, uncertainty, weariness, ridicule, lack of support due to selfish ambition, and many other negatives or distorted spirits will attempt to flood the natural mind and the thought of you turning back or backing out and try to conquer and divide. Understand that rejection, being misunderstood, and our positions are sometimes inevitable. Isolation doesn't always feel good, but even greater than that, sometimes others cannot and will not understand your mission. Know that Jesus encountered and endured the same challenges we face. He showed us that the journey will not always be smooth. He experienced that not all will accept, approve of, and speak well of you. Listen, if you have decided to follow Jesus, hang on in there. Remember, to reign with the Father, suffering and persecution will come. But the Bible tells us in Matthew 5 and 10 that blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So stay the course. Remove the distractors. Remain focused. Keep your eyes on the prize. Cling to the word. Stay fully committed to Christ. Don't look back. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Jesus. Again, I say don't look back. Focus on the fact that God is a sustainer, God is a keeper, God is holy, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in need. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 12 that if we endure, we will also reign with him. He is also saying, no cross, no crown. So I admonish you today that if he is knocking on the door of your heart, if he is drawing you unto himself, do not resist, but come willingly, excitedly, 
and joyfully. See, God offered Jesus his son to suffer on our behalf. He showed us how to navigate in this process. Jesus went to the father in the garden of Gethsemane and fell on his face. And he said, Lord, which is the one who gave him the mission. Lord, I would that you remove this cup from me. The Bible doesn't state it, but I believe Jesus waited for a response. And when the mission did not change, Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. He self-sacrificed on our behalf. He endured the suffering, the shame, the ridicule, the nice nastiness, the trials, the tribulations, the tests, the discouragement, the ugliness, the plots, the schemes, the deceptions, the manipulation, the betrayal. And you know, the list just goes on and on. But he endured it all for you and he did it for me. To all of us in the body of Christ, I implore you today to not halfway or haphazardly put your hand to the plow, but be fully committed to Christ. Yes, you will need some protection. Ephesians 6, 10 through 16 states to draw our strength from the Lord and be empowered through your union with him in his boundless might. God is the manufacturer of the spiritual armor. God is the spiritual armor. And he tells us in his word to put on his full armor to successfully stand up against all the schemes and strategies and deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces, against this darkness, mm, against the spiritual forces of wickedness, wickedness in the supernatural places. Therefore, we need to be fully dressed to be immovable and victorious as Jesus. So stand firm to hold your ground. Saints with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness, which is a pure heart. Strap your feet with the gospel, which is the good news. But above all, lift up your protective shield of faith to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And as Jesus did with all prayer and petition, pray to the father with specific requests on every occasion and in every season in the spirit and stay alert with all perseverance and petition. Don't look back, church, because the cost could be fatal. Christ endured the shame and other distorted spirits on our behalf to give us a way to the Father. He continued the mission. Mm. He was mocked, crucified, buried, resurrected, and ascended into heaven, but left us the Holy Spirit to instruct, teach, and guide us into all truth. Saints, be sober and keep in the forefront of your mind that God is. God is, and because God is, regression is not an option. So again, I say for someone today, first things first, accept the call to salvation, then to your assignment. Make Jesus Lord, Master, and Savior over your life. The Spirit is saying, seize the day. Seize this moment. Stop making excuses. Stop putting off today for tomorrow to carry out the call of salvation in God's assignment for your life. Then never give up. Never speak defeat. Never speak anything but kingdom language that states, I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am blessed coming in and going out. I am more than a conqueror. I am a victor, not a victim. And I can and will do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Oh, I say again, never give up. And if you slip, repent, brush yourself off, encourage yourself and get back up and remember the words that the Lord states that he is married to the backslider. Do not put off this critical moment. God made a way for us through Christ Jesus, the way and the platform for consistency and sustainability is through Jesus. 
He is the salve and balm in Gilead for our souls. As you accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, will guide, advise, and instruct you in the ways of the Lord. I say, remember, God is. God is. God is. Therefore, regression is not an option. Thank you. God bless. Hallelujah and amen. Family, the greatest decision that you can ever make in life is to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He died that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. He died and was resurrected so that you would have access to eternal life, to live beyond the confines of this world. If you are listening today and you say, I need to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, or maybe you have drifted away somehow and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, I invite you to say this prayer with me. Just close your eyes, bow your head, and say these words. Say, Father, I am a sinner, and I confess now with my mouth, believe with my heart, that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. Say, I believe he was wounded for me. I believe he was nailed to a cross for me. I believe that he was buried for me. And I believe that God rose him from the grave for me. Say, today I confess that he is Savior and Lord, and I am saved, I am saved, I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And for those who are listening now and say, Pastor, I just need prayer. I've been going through a difficult time. I've been grieving a lost loved one. I've been struggling in my body physically or my mind mentally has been giving me some issues if I've wrestled with all that's going on in our world. If that's you, my brother, my sister, just lift up your hands and let me pray with you. Father, I pray for those hands that are lifted right now. Pray for those who are hearing the sound of my voice. God, you know every need, every problem, every issue. But above all that, God, you know the resolution. You know these bodies and how to heal them. You know these minds and how to bring peace. So God, we speak healing now. We speak peace now. We speak joy now. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray that your will would be done in our families' lives, and our vocational lives, that your will would be done in our finances. And Lord, in every area of our lives, God, may the lives we live be a reflection of your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your glory. May we be a reflection, God, of you so that when people see us, they see you. I pray for those who are feeling weak right now that they would find strength, great strength in you. May it be a powerful strength, the same strength that raised Jesus from the grave. May that strength be the strength that we feel because we know you are with us. And so God, be with that brother, be with that sister, be with that mother, be with that father delivering them from evil and from the hands of the enemy. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for this day. Look, family, thank you so much for tuning in on once again another last Wednesday of the month. I do pray that you have been blessed. Our associate ministers are continuing to step up and preach an encouraging message that helps us along this life's journey. I want to remind you once again that we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper on this coming Sunday. And if you will be with us virtually, you can drive through this Saturday from 11 a.m. until noon. That's this Saturday from 11 a.m. until noon, and you can pick up the Lord's Supper. 
If you are going to be present with us at 8, don't worry, we have you covered. We will disseminate the Lord's Supper during the regular worship hour. I do hope to see you soon. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of your day.